there are only two things you need to know about Alan Moore. One, he's written some of the most highly regarded comics of all time. Two, he hates Stan Lee. Yeah, that Stan Lee. So much so, back in 1983, Moore wrote an entire essay devoted to Lee titled Blinded by the Hype, an affectionate character assassination. Here, Moore recalls becoming a fan of Lee's work at age six after reading an issue of Fantastic Four number three published back in 1961. Moore illustrates how Lee's novel approach to characterization provided a blueprint for creatives at Marvel, as well as those over at DC and even independent publishers. But in the same breath, Moore points out how Lee's massive influence trapped the comics industry in a perpetual state of mediocrity, subsequent writers only able to do average at best Stan Lee impersonations. Moore simultaneously gives the former Marvel Comics editor his flowers, while also kicking dirt in his face from the very same garden. In a way, Lee was one of the first heroes Moore deconstructed, questioning how much of the man was hero and how much was villain. This cross-examination provided Moore the perfect target practice before taking on more fantastical characters. Despite his disdain, Moore was still a fan nonetheless. In fact, Lee's style of storytelling was so influential on Moore, it would serve as a foundation for his magnum opus, 1986's Watchmen. The connection lies somewhere in the pages of Marvel's Amazing Fantasy issue number 15, published in August of 1962. Here, Lee, along with the help of artistic giants Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko, would introduce Marvel's future flagship character. In the Watchmen universe, there are four words which lurk in the background, oftentimes obscured by the city around them. In its current context, this expression addresses the conundrum of policing those in positions of power, possibly great power. It bears a spiritual connection with yet another famous quote found in comic lore. And with great power, there must also come great responsibility. The Peter Parker principle, although retroactively ascribed to Peter's uncle, Ben Parker, initially wasn't said by any character. Instead, appearing in a panel on the final page of Spidey's debut issue, less a quote and more a mantra. Don't take power for granted. Use it wisely. Never let it change who you fundamentally are. Never let power corrupt you. Mind you, Spidey wasn't the first Marvel legend Lee would create alongside Kirby and Ditko, and he wouldn't be the last. However, Lee specifically chose Spider-Man to push this message to the masses because of the person underneath the mask, 16-year-old Peter Parker. Parker slash Spider-Man were Lee's way of challenging the notion of superheroes as inherently perfect creating a character who bore not only the extraordinary weight of being a superhero, but also the commonplace struggles of everyday life, thereby bringing a degree of maturity and relatability to comics. Lee created a character unlike anything the industry had seen at the time, a truly flawed superhero, someone with shortcomings like you and me, a hero whose entire body was completely concealed, a design choice courtesy of Ditko, it could be any one of us under that red and blue suit. Because in the words of Stan himself, You right. could be anything and imagine you were in that costume. Right. And this is where Alan Moore rips a page straight from the book of Stan. While writing Watchmen, Moore took Lee's ideology and went a step further. Not only challenging the idea of superheroes as inherently perfect, but also questioning if they were inherently good, or even necessary for that matter. When Stanley proclaimed anyone can wear the mask, it meant everyone has potential to be a hero if and only if they accept the responsibility which comes along with it. The constant pursuit for justice. The constant pursuit for goodwill. The sacrifice. Moore imagined a world where superheroes don masks not only to conceal their identities, but to also hide their true nature. In Moore's world, Heroes pursue their own heathenistic ways at the expense of others. Look down on the world around them and discuss through a black and white lens. Sacrifice the lives of the many for the quote unquote greater good. Moore saw the world around him for what it was and quite possibly the deaths it could sink to under the authority of powerful yet fallible individuals, the degenerate, 
the mentally unstable, the neglected, the war-torn, the pompous. Even Dr. Manhattan, for all his godlike glory, is flawed in the sense that he loses the ability to empathize with humankind. From his perspective, the big things look small or don't even exist at all. And at a certain point, he can no longer deny this truth, removing his metaphorical mask. Likely, more understood that the men and women in these suits and masks with these powers were just that, men and women in suits and masks with power. But no matter how powerful they were, they were still human. The question he posed was simple. Who controls the uncontrollable? And with that one question, Moore killed the superhero, yet ironically resurrected it, all in one fell swoop, helping birth the next age of comics. Spider-Man and various other characters born under Lee's literary reign are products of the Silver Age of comics, which ran from 1956 to approximately 1970. During this period, the United States entered the tumultuous 60s, the civil rights movement in full swing. Only one year after Spidey's debut, JFK is assassinated. Malcolm X follows in 1965, then Martin Luther King and John Kennedy's brother, Robert Kennedy, both in 1968. All larger than life figures, all superheroes in their own right, all gone before the decades end. Additionally, the U.S.'s shaky presence in Vietnam brought about a sense of nihilism to its citizens as the new decade approached. The Superman was real, and he was American, and he died on the world stage for all to see. The Bronze Age followed from 1970 to 1985, and by 1986, Watchmen, along with Frank Miller's seminal The Dark Knight Returns, signified the beginning of the modern age of comics and the rebirth of the superhuman. Darker grittier imperfections on display less emphasis on the super and much more on the human for as much as alan moore despised the oversaturation of lee's particular writing style he's not much better himself the release of watchmen smashed the proverbial reset button on the comics industry much in the same way lee's soap opera-esque tales dominated the industry in his heyday after watchmen everyone wanted to write like moore even if it was at the expense of a character's integrity. Pretty soon, the market became oversaturated with Watchmen clones. Pretty soon, Moore became the very thing he despised, the new Stan Lee. With great power, there must also come great responsibility. And anyone can indeed wear the mask, which is what makes the idea of superheroes all the more unsettling. Watchmen paints a picture of perfect symmetry, juxtaposing superheroes in positions of great power as well as great vulnerability, showcasing what this says about our obsession with these superpower but far from perfect characters. In short, Lee and Moore are essentially two sides of the same coin, each placing the all-American superhero under a lens. Lee used a microscope, Moore a long-range sniper rifle. Since the release of Watchmen, Moore has publicly decried superheroes as a prelude to fascism it made a pretty fair point. And maybe Lee saw what he sees too. Having served in World War II, Lee understood how easy it was for powerful men to abuse said power and how this could affect people in their everyday life. With this knowledge, Lee chose to confront the matter with a degree of optimism on paper. Peter Parker makes the wrong decision on multiple occasions. His saving grace, the one attribute that makes him the superhero we all know and love to this very day, it's this initiative to take responsibility for his actions, be they good or bad. In this instance, the Watchman watches himself. Although Watchmen is typically associated with the maturation of the American superhero, it was Stan Lee and his desire to make superheroes more humanistic, which paved the way for unapologetically flawed characters. Characters that reflected us, as well as our potential to be better. Watchmen is a story Lee may have written in a more pessimistic environment. Not unlike the world more envisioned, a world where heroes reflected all of our deficiencies turned up to 11, relentlessly pushing their hands on the doomsday clock to midnight. Not unlike the world America was gradually becoming. Stan made it so anyone could be a hero. Alan wondered if anyone can be, 
then what's the true value of a hero? If you've made it to the end of this video, thanks for watching. You could have been doing anything else with your time, but you gave it a chance and I appreciate you for that. If you got something of value out of it, do me a favor and hit the like button. If you didn't, leave a message in the comment section below. Maybe you don't agree with my take or feel I left something of importance out. I'd love to hear from you and have a discussion. If you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. There's certainly more on the way. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time for the rejection booth.